Excellencies, General Officers, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, as the Mayor of Heidelberg, I have the pleasure and honor to welcome our distinguished guests who just usually followed our invitation. I would like to welcome most warmly Mr. Edward M. Hall, U.S. Ambassador to Luxembourg, Mr. Jean Lam, Ambassador to the United Kingdom to Luxembourg. Monsieur Georges Rochard, Secrétaire d'État à la Force publique. Monsieur le député Charles Goerens et Lucien Weiler. Et General David M. Maddox, Commander in Chief, US Army Bureau. Major General William E. Carter, Commander 1st Armor Division. Colonel John Dallager, Wing Commander. 52nd Fighter Wing Spangdalen. Monsieur André Destou, Consul de France, représentant l'ambassadeur de France. Colonel Ben Jacques Chilson, représentant l'ambassadeur de Belgique, attaché militaire, commandant de l'école d'infanterie à Londres. Colonel Armand Bruck, commandant de l'armée luxembourgeoise. Dear friends, uh, weapon uh, citizens of Honor of Battlebrook and dear uh, veterans, let me include all other guests who have come to attend the ceremony of the members. Nous apprécions également parmi nous la présence des représentants de nos pays voisins, belges, français, britanniques, qui ont partagé avec nous les souffrances de la dernière guerre mondiale et ont bien voulu se joindre à nous honorer nos libérateurs communs. Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, the festivities of the 50th anniversary of D-Day at the beaches of Normandy have come to an end. Thousands of veterans of the former Allied forces and thousands of tourists who had gathered around to watch the paratroopers and other reactments have returned home. The liberators of Western Europe appreciated their first visit at the different landing spots and, and also the well-deserved medals given them the allied heads of government. <coughs> the reporters of the media made it possible for us to watch the fascinating ceremonies. The Operation Overlord, the great invasion of history, not only brought the continent thousands of soldiers, but also a tremendous amount of logistical material to defeat Hitler's Wehrmacht soldiers. The battle through northern France was a fierce one. On September 10, the spiriting fives our division entered Luxembourg. They were frantically welcomed by the population. Let me tell you that Luxembourg had been annexed to the German Reich in 1940, so we did not like the Nazi regime. Books have been written about the resistance men in prison or the or camps about the young men brought by forces to the German army, the labor worked on the roads, the families of deserters deported to eastern Germany, 
and so on. Several thousand Luxembourgers never saw the home country again. 44, 45, who jeopardized their lives to restore peace and freedom in Western Europe. Last June 11, a liberation monument was dedicated at Truman Crossroad near Wilts in a forested area where most of the killed in action were found after the battle. Various memorials have been erected all over the Ardent area. For instance, a GI statue is to be seen in Clairvaux. Hey, Mr. Edward M. Rowell, Ambassador of the United States of America, will now address you. The American Ambassador to Lützebüch, Edward M. Rowell, as in Ursprung. Mr. State Secretary, Mr. Mayor and Deputy, General Maddox, General Carter, Excellencies, distinguished guests, veterans, veterans and their families and friends. In a year of spectacular commemorations, of the 50th anniversary of the liberation of Europe, I can think of no remembrance more pure, more dignified than that offered by the people of Ettelbrook here today. I am deeply grateful to all of you, dear and faithful Luxembourg friends. As we look around us, it is hard to believe that four decades ago, five decades ago, four, this serene and beautiful city was still clearing away the rubble of devastating war. 41 years ago, the citizens of this town were still rebuilding homes and churches. You were still mourning your dead. Yet even as the back-breaking work of renewal went on, one of your own soldiers, Frankie Hansen, inspired you to make a compact among yourselves to remember what had happened here. You vowed that each year a day would be set aside to honor a steel-willed American general, George Smith Patton, Jr and the gallant men and women of his incomparable Third Army. You vow to remember the families here and in America who struggled and suffered, who lost homes and sons and daughters. Most important of all, you vowed to remember that that war was fought to protect freedom and human dignity to restore peace and humane values across our planet. You vowed to remind us all that safeguarding these precious gifts is the sacred responsibility of every single one of us for all time. Let us reflect for a moment on George Patton himself that giant in war whose statue graces this Remembrance Park. Perhaps above all else, Patton was a man for his times. As tyranny was searing the world in 1940, a call went out for brave men and women to lead the fight against that tyranny. Patton answered that call. He brimmed with a flinty self-confidence and a renowned earthy bluster. The times called for both. He was a man of infinite personal courage who expected and received the same from his soldiers. He never sought the mantle of war hero. He knew that his soldiers were the real heroes. As we reflect on the peace and comfort that we here enjoy today, we thank God 
that this man recognized his destiny and embraced it, that he saw his duty and did it. During my four wonderful years here in Luxembourg, I have heard many inspirational and touching stories about the war years in the Grand Duchy. This has been especially true this year as our honored veterans and their families and friends return to Luxembourg to reminisce with you and your families about a time of countless heroes and too many martyrs. In each of these stories, there runs a common thread. It is a thread of hope. Even in the darkest days of the occupation of Luxembourg or the fury of the Battle of the Bulge, Americans and Luxembourgers never lost faith with the future. The hope of freedom and peace restored, the hope of returning to home and family. Such hope sustained us all, sustains us all. Ladies and gentlemen, Remembrance Day in Ethelbrook is the most important and touching tribute anywhere on earth to the gallantry of George Patton and the men and women of the Third Army. Patton and the mighty Third were freedom's hammer, and you honor them with exquisite sincerity. As American ambassador, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Remembrance Day also gives us all an opportunity to reflect upon the values we shared in 1944, values we still share today. Freedom, democracy, human dignity. It was for these treasured ideals that Americans and Luxembourgers and French, Belgians, British, soldiers and civilians all risked everything dear to them including life itself. Freedom is no less dear today, and the price of freedom remains a willingness to risk all in its defense. It is a price we remain prepared to meet. So in this 50th anniversary year, we rededicate ourselves to the meaning of Remembrance Day. Friendship between the United States and Luxembourg and solidarity with other freedom-loving nations guided us to victory 50 years ago. At future Remembrance Days, our children, their children, too, will come to understand what happened here and why. They will understand that free peoples will be ready, must be ready, to stand together against the poison of new hatreds and the insanity of tomorrow's fanatics. Above all, future generations must carry on the struggle for freedom as their forebears did on this very ground 50 years ago. This is what we must remember. This is the essence of Remembrance Day. And now, a special word for our Luxembourg friends and hosts. Leif Lesseboyer-Fren. On behalf of the American Army, General Maddox, Commander-in-Chief, U.S. Army Europe, will address you. At first, I am from the American Army, General Maddox, Commandant from the American Army in Europe. Mayor Juncker, Secretary of State, Wolfhart, Ambassador Mrs. Roll, Excellencies, distinguished guests, and veterans of the Ardennes Campaign, the Battle of the Bulge, and the fight to regain freedom for Luxembourg and Edelbrook. Today we honor you and your comrades in arms, those who fell in the most terrible of conflicts, yet for the most noble of causes. We stand on hallowed ground, made holy by the blood of the soldiers who stopped the enemy advance here 
nearly 50 years ago. 5,076 of whom now lay in peace on the hillside at Ham Cemetery, not far away, with General Patton still leading their formation. And the blood of thousands of others, soldiers and civilians, from five different countries who valued freedom and the lives of others more than their own. Today is a Remembrance Day, a patent day, and it's more than right and proper that we remember. It's essential that we never forget, because this day is about courage, about honor and human dignity, it's about freedom and duty and sacrifice. It's about greatness in human beings. We're approaching the 50th anniversary of the Battle of the Bulge. This memorial, at the point where the Nazi advance was turned around, is 40 years old. The statue of Patton, looking over the field of battle, is just like the one that every West Point cadet sees every day, and it's been here for nearly 30 years. Yes, this is a particularly significant Remembrance Day, but every anniversary of Patton Day is significant because these days are symbolic of the great patriotism and love of freedom that characterize you, the citizens of Luxembourg. And it signifies the constant close relationship that you have built with the United States, our Army, and our soldiers. Let me try to reset the clock back nearly 50 years ago and help us remember. Edelbrook had been free for three months, and suddenly the hardship of war reappeared. The center of the offensive around the southern shoulder was Edelbrook. Who were the soldiers that fought? What were they like? One example, Lieutenant Colonel Rutter of the 109th Infantry, part of the 28th Infantry Division, exhausted, arrived in November to Edelbrook. Edelbrook, the paradise for weary troops. And Rudder, like Edelbrook, was weary of war. As a Ranger Battalion commander, he had scaled the cliffs of Ponto Hoc on D-Day and had fought the next six months and was ready for a break. He established his regimental headquarters at Edelbrook, and he found himself at the brunt of the attack. He helped evacuate civilians, some into cave dwellings, because not a house in Edelbrook survived intact. Outnumbered, continued the fight, but Edelbrook went back into Nazi hands for the second time. Patton and his third army was given the mission to get to Luxembourg and take command of the battle. He did. Within 72 hours, three divisions, supported by the 19th Tactical Air Command, had joined the fight. The 80th Division of the 3rd Army liberated the town of Edelbrook on the 26th of December. And in a little over a month, a month, from 16 December to 28 January, the bulge was won at a cost of more than 32,000 battle casualties in the 3rd Army, the highest of any operation that Army conducted. But there's more to the history than that. This was an allied fight for freedom, an allied victory, and the cost was allied lives. The heroes were both soldiers and civilians. Americans and Luxembourgers, and Luxembourg paid dearly. 
paid dearly for its freedom with more than 5,000 dead. They were members of the underground, rescuing Allied pilots. They fought with Allied units in the Belgian Liberation Brigade. Many joined British units, particularly the Royal Air Force and the Irish Guards. Others parachuted into occupied territory with special operations units. Still others joined the American units that came to liberate them, like Frankie Hansen, one of the Edelbrook residents who, as a young man, so enthusiastically supported the Americans who came to free his town that he fought alongside them and was awarded the Silver Star by the United States government for his actions ensuring a vital bridge was not destroyed. And subsequently, even as Edelbrook was rebuilding, Mr. Hansen became the driving force for this annual event. So we remember and we honor our heroes and our veterans. Our partnership, born in World War II, tried and proven during the Cold War, and now matured in peace. We're particularly thankful for our military partnership with the Luxembourg Army. Every 412th Infantry Battalion commander learns about it long before assuming command. And every year, you welcome our soldiers and open your town to them as if they were your own. Edelbrook has again become renowned as a paradise, but not only for realization of our vision, the hope of freedom for the entire continent. On behalf of the 80,000 soldiers of today's United States Army in Europe, I thank you. God bless you. We will hear now Colonel Dallager, Wing Commander, 52nd Fighter Wing, Spangdalen, representing the U.S. Air Force. Am Nymphen Amerikanische Air Force, Herr Colonel Dallager, Wing Commander für Spangdalen. 